Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Asian Psycho, and we're gonna get started on the 41st chapter of the Explore New Arsenal series. For we finally reached the 40s, and uh, now we're gonna get started on the Chris family. This is otherwise known as a TDI Vector. Uh, for those of you guys who come from Modern Warfare 2 backgrounds, it was called the uh, the Vector in Modern Warfare 2. Um, just a little bit of trivia there. But anyways, yeah. Um, this some machine was pretty. It was pretty popularly requested by some people. Um, well, not some, because otherwise it wouldn't be like popular. It was actually requested quite a bit by people. Um, not as much as some other guns, but um, it, it was it's still up there in terms of like overall popularity and, and like requests that I've received, like asking me to uh, review the Chris. But and now that now that we've I finally reached the rank at which the Chris is unlocked, which is uh, I think it's Sergeant First Class Two, we are now gonna get underway with the review on it, and yeah. Let's get started. So the Chris, a little bit of background information uh, as pertaining to uh, as pertains to combat arms is that it uh, it is unlocked at Sergeant First Class Two, and it does cost I think 1,200 uh, GP a day, which is actually on the pri on the pricier side of uh, some machine guns. In fact, uh, for GP standards, this is actually your most expensive or one of your most expensive some machine guns. So unfortunately, it is pretty the price is pretty hefty on this, and I don't really understand why. I don't think it's really worth the cost unless you're like a huge super huge fan of the Chris uh but I mean whatever it's gonna it's gonna you know make a mark on your uh on your finances if you especially if you're uh, one of those types where uh, you don't really have a lot of GP lying around all the time so anyways let's get started with the review so and it's damage. The damage that the Chris deals is a 33. Now, I believe this is the same damage that the MP5 deals. I believe the MP5 also de dealt um, a 33 damage as well. So, this is definitely a very low uh, damage submachine gun. In exchange, as you, you guys, as you guys may, you know predict the Chris does have an extremely fast fire rate and you know that's kind of what's to be expected of a submachine gun like this usually when you have low damage usually you've got a very very fast fire rate to complement it and that's what the Chris delivers it's got a high portability 88 this is this is actually surprisingly uh, on par with uh, some of your uh, standard NX standard submachine guns like the recent uh, CZ Scorpion Evo A3 A1 whatever the fuck you want to call it and um, the T2 amongst others so this is surprisingly enough a very fast uh, what moving um, GP standard submachine gun and I'm glad that uh, Nexon took into consideration to uh, counter the NX standard the usual NX standard submachine guns that they've been releasing lately you know give uh, the you know the the guys who don't really have access to NX all the time um, you know some some means to counter these super overpowered uh, NX standard machine uh, some machine is by giving us like you know an 88 portability 90 rate of fire uh, some machine gun of our own so I think that's a very nice thing that Nexon has done for us especially for the cr uh, the non NX using crowd you know they don't really have much of a choice but to use G GP weapons if they don't have NX so um, the Chris is a very welcome uh, addition to the arsenal in combat so the rate of fire we just covered it now it does have a very fast rate of fire at 90 so it, it once again this is top notch among some machine guns and and in general of all uh, weapons in general combat arms as well so Moving on alongside, the accuracy on the uh, Chris submachine gun is actually very high for a submachine gun at 73. I believe this is second only to the uh, CZ Scorpion Evo 3 A3A1, whatever the fuck you want to call it, the CZ Scorpion. Okay, um, the CZ Scorpion had a 78 uh, accuracy, and there, it's st there's still a very big gap between the Chris's accuracy and the CZ's accuracy. But still, it, the Chris, I, I can't really think of any other submachine gun off the top of my head that has a higher accuracy um, than the Chris. Chris other than the CC Scorpion. Moving on to the recoil. The recoil on the uh, on the Chris is at a pretty low 63. I mean, the FMG9 Magpul has less, but then again, that's an NX standard so machine gun, so I mean, you really can't really compare those two. Uh, so, for what it is, the Chris does have extremely low recoil, technically. Now here's why I say technically. The recoil on the Chris per shot is very low. So um, recoil spread rec recoil spread is is manageable, but it's not exactly the best either. Um, when you're going full auto because of the fast rate of fire, uh, the center speed can't really uh, can't, can't really you know 
match the uh, Chris's uh, insanely fast rate of fire. So you're gonna find that the spread is very. Um, it can be obnoxious at times, but it's not the. It's not. It's by far not the worst. So you can deal with it. But um, I would. I'm. I'm gonna go on a limb here and say I would recommend a silencer because silencers do usually re reduce the recoil on um, on weapons that you attach a silencer on to. So I would have to say go with a silencer on the Chris because I mean it already deals a, a low damage anyway and it's got a, it's already got a very fast rate of fire so um, I would recommend a silencer on it but personally speaking I don't really like silencers so whatever take it as you will moving on well moving on to next on to the uh, recoil of kickback now here's where it starts to become a problem the recoil pattern of the Chris is very very weird it's one of the defining features of the Chris and its other variant the Chris spec ops the Chris submachine gun has a very awkward extreme diagonal recoil pattern. Now you might think, well, I mean other weapons have diagonal kick too, like the M417 Combat has, you know, diagonal kick if you uh, aim down its red dot sight and, you know, spray, um, just hold down a trigger and just fire away and you'll notice that, you know, the M417 Combat has, or not the Justice Combat, but the M417 and the M417 Combat do have, like, uh, like pretty heavy diagonal recoil patterns. However, it's not as bad as a Chris. If you take an ACOG or 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 any kind of sight and you just spray with it, you'll definitely notice that it's got some pretty damn heavy um, diagonal recoil patterns. You'll especially notice this while you're. It's so big that you'll especially notice this while you're just spraying, running around and spraying at people. Normally, when you're just running around, the recoil pattern doesn't really affect your spraying too much. However, on the Chris, I would have to advise you strongly to control your recoil because the if you don't, the diagonal, the heavy diagonal recoil of the Chris will screw up your aim. I repeat again, it will screw up your aim if you are not careful. So that's one of the main disadvantages of the Chris that that it's it's very weird and awkward very heavy diagonal side to side up uh, like up right and up left um recoil kicks and it, it can be very annoying it can be it can really throw off your aim if you are not careful enough so do be careful of that Moving on to the, uh, what's next here? The tap fire ability. It is tap fireable even though it does have an extremely fast fire rate. I mean, like, for example, uh, the, uh, what was it called? I think the, uh, I don't know. Some some an extender submachine guns have uh, have a really hard time, you know, tap firing. The Chris is one of those submachine guns where it has extremely fast fire rates, or it has a, it has an extremely fast fire rate. But at the same time, it's it's pretty easy to tap fire it with. At the same time, so if you really needed to, you can go ahead and tap fire it with it. It's just not recommended because I mean, it is a submachine gun, and low damage submachine guns typically have very bad uh, damage over range properties. So it's not really recommended. But if you got to, then there you go. Moving on to the sprint drawback. The sprint drawback is pretty quick. I mean, it is a submachine gun, so y you know you're gonna you're gonna want you're gonna need that that uh, fast uh, pull up speed that the submachine most submachine guns do offer you at, because I mean you're gonna be fighting at close range all the time with the Chris most likely. So um, the quick sprint drawback time is very very useful. Moving on to the uh, the draw speed. The draw speed is extremely quick for some, even for a submachine gun. So that's also very helpful when you're, you know, caught with, caught without your, uh, when you're, you know, you're running along with your knife or your pistol out, and you are caught, are caught with basically with your pants down, and someone uh, jumps out at you with a spray at you, and then you, you know, you need to, you f you feel like you need to bring out your Chris like right away. The Chris does have a very fast draw speed. Don't rely on it too much, but it is fast for what it is. Moving on to the center speed. The center speed is pretty quick on the uh, Chris. It's nothing t too special, and like I mentioned before, it's not fast enough to um, you know negate the, uh, the sorry about that the heavy recoil um, that the um, the Chris has. I mean, I know I say heavy recoil because um, overall it's pretty difficult to manage the recoil on the Chris. Um, because because it's fat insanely fast fire rate. The combination of the fast fire rate and um, it's it's very very uh, diagonal kick, uh, recoil kick, and the fact that you know, um, it it's just it just kicks a lot for some reason. Well, I mean, I shouldn't say for some reason, but it just kicks a lot more than other submachine guns. So you should be careful of that. So there you have it. Um, 
some reload speed. The reload speed on the Chris is extremely fast, even with the uh, even with the Extended Mag 2. I'm using Extended Mag 1 here in this gameplay. Um, even with the Extended Mag 2, you can definitely reload very quickly with the Chris. Um, it reloads much faster than other sub, uh, submachine guns, so do uh, do keep that in mind if you are planning to buy some Extended Magazine. May just maybe uh, that Extended Mag 2 might be a good idea. Though I would recommend just Extended Mag 1, but that's up to you. Moving on to the fire modes. The fire modes on the Chris is only there's only one available, and that's fully automatic, so no surprises there. Um, let's see, luck. Now the Chris and the Chris family, the Chris and the Chris Spec Ops, are extremely known for and and very very widely feared for their you know their lottoing capabilities. It's one of those submachine guns, or it's one of those families of submachine guns where you know if you aim for the head, you're most likely gonna get a headshot. So the Chris is is a very definitely a powerhouse in getting picking you picking up headshots even from like middle range. It's crazy how um. You know how lucky it is. Maybe it's high accuracy has something to do with it, but I mean that's up to you for you, whether or not you want to believe that or not. But um, it, it, nonetheless, it is very, very uh, reliable in getting you headshots. Um, as you can see in this gameplay, as you, probably you guys have seen me pick up a lot of headshots in this game in this video. So that just kind of attests to its uh, headshotting abilities. So there you go. Now, his ammo capacity is kind of a weird thing on the uh, on the Chris. Unlike most submachine guns, the Chris and the Chris Spec Ops are unique in this trait. They have a unique 28 round magazine. Now, why I why they chose to, why Nexon chose to do this, I'm not too sure. I mean, Mom for two, the TDI Vector had uh, had a normal 30 round magazine, so I don't know why Nexon decided to uh, nerf this uh, gun by two bullets by giving it like a really weird. Uh, an awkward 28 round magazine, but I mean that's what they can do. I mean, two bullets isn't really gonna make make or break um, like your most of your gunfights, but I mean it might. But most likely it's not going to. So I mean you shouldn't really stress about it too much. But then again, um, it is kind of weird why Nexon would do that. So there you go. Key physical characteristics. So the Chris, it looks, it, it just looks very weird as a submachine gun. Like it kind of looks, it's kind of as weird as when I first laid my eyes on the P90. Like I was like, this is a submachine gun. It's like this is a gun. Like what the hell? And that was that was my first purchase of the Chris as well. Like it just looks very very weird. It's got a very boxy this gun frame design and all. So I don't know. It, it took me a little bit of time to get used to the uh, handling the Chris, and it's like it's just it's just weird appearance. But in in any case, appearance shouldn't really matter when you're using a gun. And I got over it quickly, so it's 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 quite the fun, Chris. Uh, not only to use, but also to look at. It's like for the lulls. Moving on to the muzzle noise. The muzzle noise on a Chris is a very low, um, kind of a brrrr sound. So um, I do apologize for my very terrible, uh, for, you know. <laughs> Recre recreations of uh, gun noises, but that's as close as I can get. So there you go. Uh, moving on to the um, watch me call it. What can I do here? Um, the attachment options. So the Chris is able to attach any kind of modification on it: sil silencers, um, magazine modifications, and sights. All of those you can uh, choose choose from and use as you will. So there you go. Uh, moving on to whether or not it's fire team worthy because I don't really like uh, recommending uh, like low damage submachine guns to fire team because they just don't put down zombies fast enough. Um, I mean, for fire team like uh, ne Nemesis HQ and like the human NPC ones, I mean, I guess because really any weapon is good against he those uh, the human NPCs. But for zombies, nah, I wouldn't recommend it. It's you might if you really want to bring a submachine gun, bring like a very high power submachine gun. So. Moving on to the what's next here? The quarantine, quarantine. Whether or not it's quarantine worthy. Well, because of its 88 portability and very fast rate of fire, I would say yeah. I mean, I guess I guess I can see people using it in quarantine because I usually recommend uh, you know some machines like this, like high rate of fire, uh, not necessarily high damage, but very indefinitely, definitely high rate of fire some machine guns. So um, to quarantine. So take it as you will. If you want to use it for quarantine, go ahead. As for my frank personal opinions, the Chris is a very fun submachine gun indeed to use. Um, just, just 
make sure to control the recoil on this because it is indeed very heavy to uh, control the recoil on this. Um, just today, as I'm recording this audio commentary and recording the gameplay, um, I was I need to get some time to get used to the recoil on the Chris because it's just it's just so heavy. The um, the the diagonal recoil of the Chris it can get pretty frustrating um, if you're not if definitely you're not used to controlling recoil. But at the same time, it does after a while you start noticing like yeah, it's pretty predictable. Um, even though it's pretty heavy like it kicks very hard le uh, up left and very hard up right it 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 after a while after you've used it for a, enough a long enough time you start noticing you know when it's going to kick this way when it's going to kick that way and pretty soon it becomes pretty predictable to uh you know or pretty soon the recoil becomes pretty easy to predict after a time and pretty quickly you become to get acclimated to it and pretty soon soon enough you'll probably end up liking the chris in the end so yeah, the Chris is a very good submachine gun. I would definitely recommend it to anyone who has a spare GP to, uh, or has a GP to spare or uh, doesn't really mind the fact that it kind of looks weird and has a 28 round magazine. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. This will conclude the episode on the Chris uh, or the review on the Chris. It is a very good submachine gun. Definitely try it out uh, if you're a uh, Sergeant First Class 2 uh, and above. And, yeah, by this point, you would you should have seen a sneak peek into uh, my Chris Spec Ops uh, review. So, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm um, glad you guys could drop by and watch this review. And yeah, next review will be on the Chris Spec Ops, the NX standard variant of the Chris. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you guys later. You could have shit that, then.